Hey guys, I'm Melky and welcome back to my channel. Have you ever heard of the phrase priority dilution? Priority dilution means falling victim to the tyranny of the urgent, which is always pulling us away from things that we know are important but somehow don't demand our attention right now. After reading about priority dilution, I could relate myself solely to it. Rory Vaden is the world's leader on defining the psychology around modern day procrastination called priority dilution. In fact, he coined the term. This is the third type of procrastination. He argued that a lot of people think they're procrastinating when really they're grappling with how to prioritize the zillions of tasks that come pinging our way. Procrastination is when you consciously delay doing something that you know you should be doing, he says. Typically, the person who does that is lazy or apathetic. Priority dilution happens because we can't figure out where to put our energy first. Priority dilution is a form of procrastination that affects the very people that you wouldn't typically consider to be procrastinators. The chronic overachievers. People who have every desire to do well and try to do their best job. The average procrastinator knows consciously that they're putting off things that they should be doing. However, for high-level performers, anyone else active in a lot of activities at school and off school, this new form of procrastination isn't as self-evident. Priority dilution is a dangerously deceptive saboteur of their goals because it is unconscious. While priority dilution has nothing to do with laziness, apathy, or being disengaged like traditional procrastination, it nets the same result. A delay of the day's most important activities because your attention shifts to less important, but perhaps seemingly more urgent tasks. You're trading your to-do list for emergencies. Referring back to Stephen Covey's time matrix, priority dilution is allowing ourselves to be pulled out of quadrant two, important but not urgent, and mostly into quadrant one, important and urgent. That causes us to neglect some of the critical activities that lead to long-term success. It causes our priorities to dilute. After my middle school days, I started to realize that because of my extraordinary competency, more and more responsibility was dumped on my plate. And eventually, I was overloaded. Every club or team insisted on having me on board. Peers in my class wanted to team up with me on projects. I received a lot of emails and messages requesting to clarify their doubts or asking me to explain or teach them a concept. I was answering several messages every day. Family, friends, cousins, church, wherever I am involved in, everyone had something to ask for me to support them. However, the harder I worked, I started to feel like I'm falling further behind. For every task I completed, I got two in return. My life was often characterized as a constant state of interruption. I was feeling hopeless, overwhelmed, underrested, unsure if I can keep up with the pace that life was throwing at me. Sometimes I desperately asked myself, is this ever going to get better? I started to feel guilty that the most significant priorities were not accomplished. Rory Vaden's books have been my eye-opener. Today, as a freshman at high school, when there are more tasks than I could possibly ever get to, the key skill I have developed is how to decide what activities to engage in and which ones to let go. Join me again next week as I share more on my learning from Rory Vaden's books on time. 
Bye for now and see you next week.